Hello there, I'm Kaz, and I'm here to talk about E3 2014 with Microsoft's press conference. I'm recording this directly after the E3 press conference, so I apologize in advance if we see or hear any more information about the titles we just saw. If my voice sounds different right now, it's because I'm sick. Also, I'm recording this without a script, just some general notes about what I saw at the E3 press conference, and yes, I am showing footage for a Nintendo game at a Microsoft press conference. It's the only footage I have pre-recorded, moving on. So Microsoft opened at their press conference with Phil Spencer, saying that this year it's all about the gamers and games. Which they certainly did so because there was no showing of the Kinect, thankfully. They showed off Call of Duty Ghost as to be expected because Microsoft and their exclusive deals with their DLC. It looked much better gameplay-wise than the other Call of Duties, and it had some interesting tech. I liked the use of the car door as a shield, and the grenade that highlighted enemies, but ultimately, it doesn't look too different from the other CODs. It looks more like it's Titanfall, which yes, it was obviously in development at around the same time, so it's unlikely that they ripped it off in just a year, but I digress. But I'm not really interested in the Call of Duty series anymore. Likewise, I'm not really interested in racing games when they showed off Forza Motorsports 5 and announced some new free content for it. As well as Forza Horizon 2 with its dramatic weather, which yes, was in the trailer they actually said that, and 200 cars, or over 200 cars, which is less than Forza Force 500 cars, so I'm assuming they're going to put DLC on that. But I'm not a fan of racing games in general, so I shouldn't really be talking much about that. They showed off some new gameplay for Evolve, which looked pretty neat, definitely interesting. Ubisoft showed off Assassin's Creed Unity, which is apparently set in the French Revolution, which is an excellent setting. I'm really looking forward and hoping that they do a lot of good things with that. They also said it was the largest open world in Assassin's Creed history, and that there was going to be four-player co-op. No mention of whether or not you're going to be able to play on the high seas, and I very much doubt they're going to be doing that. But there was something strange about this demo. People were phasing through the main character in it, and gameplay-wise, it looks the same as the other Assassin's Creed, with the exception of the multiplayer, which does look fun, but I'm not really interested in Assassin's Creed. They didn't show the other Assassin's Creed for Xbox 360 and PS3, but I'm assuming Ubisoft will show that off during their press conference later today. There were several montages of developers saying things like their favorite games, crossovers that they wanted, a few of these popped up, and they served their purpose as buffers between certain games and trailers. They were ultimately harmless, but they were fine. They didn't do anything for me, but they were neat to see. They showed off the Dragon Age 3 Inquisition trailer, and it looks pretty good. Again, not much to say, I probably won't be picking it up on Xbox One, but I'll definitely be looking forward to seeing more of it at the E3 press conference for EA. As for now, solid. Looking forward to it. Then they showed off Sunset Overdrive, which had no gameplay in its original trailer, but they showed off the demo right after. And it was just really wacky, that's the best way to put it. The main character was bouncing around, grinding on rails, shooting zombies with a grindhouse style to it. It looked like fun. It's the quintessential power fantasy, and it looks like it'll be a fun exclusive to have on Xbox One. Not much else to say. Then they showed the Dead Rising 3 DLC, which had easily the best trailer in the entire E3 press conference. It was just hilarious how they just made fun of the Super Street Fighter 2 Mega Hyper Excellent Edition AAA Alpha Omega nonsense that Capcom kept doing when they re-released games. It really did seem like they were doing an uh, apology for Dead Rising 3. Dead Rising 3 DLC, out now. Sorry for Dead Rising 3. So that was easily the best trailer, but I wouldn't say it's the best game. Then there was a new Dan Central game announced. Well, enough about that. Let's talk about Fable Legends. Actually, let's not. It's not very interesting looking either. It's a four-player co-op multiplayer-esque title where you can be the villain. It's a neat idea, but... I'd rather just play a game where the focus is solely being a villain, not splitting the focus between the game's mechanics on a hero or a villain. And frankly, it just doesn't look like a very fun game. But hey, it's Fable. It's not a very good series to begin with. Remember, Fable fans, you can send your hate mail to kazthegamerguy at hotmail.com. Then they showed off their next game, Project Spark, which is technically not a game. It's more like a game-making program, which is on Xbox One and PC. I'm sure the game community will make some great stuff with it, like the Little Big Planet and Little Big Planet 2 community did when they made those games and allowed people to create their own levels with it. And then there was that teaser at the very end with Conquer, where they decided that Conquer would be exclusive for Project Spark, or some kind of addition to it as DLC, which really got me irritated because they need to make a new Conquer game. 
They really do. Don't put Rare on it. Rare is pretty much gone. They're just a name now. Get some other studio to make it, but make a new Conquer game. Anyway, you can download it right now. I don't think they announced a price for it or if it's free, but it looks interesting. If you're into creating games, then you should definitely check it out. Next, they showed Ori in the Blind Forest, and while Dead Rising 3's DLC had the best trailer, this to me looked like the best, most interesting game that they showed. Mainly because they actually showed gameplay, but I'll get into that. It looked like an absolutely gorgeous platformer, like they were able to get the rights to the UbiArt engine, where they created an engine similar to it, whatever it may be, it looked absolutely gorgeous. Just beautiful. I, I might actually consider getting an Xbox One just because of this title, which may sound strange to a lot of other people. Then again, I'm a sucker for pretty much any 2D hand-drawn platformer, so... Or in the Blind Forest. I hoped for this. I'd love to see this become a series. Then they showed off what was the biggest announcement at the show. Halo 5 Guardians. They showed off a new trailer for it, which had zero gameplay in it. They also announced the Master Chief Collection, which is going to contain all the numerical entries in the Halo series. Halos 1, 2, 3, and 4. They didn't have Reach in it, which is disappointing because I thought Reach was the best in the series, but that's just me. They're also giving Halo 2 the anniversary treatment, and you can switch between the original and the new version of it, as well as have the original multiplayer in the game. There's over 100 maps apparently, and it's also going to include a beta for Halo 5 Guardians, which they showed a trailer for and had no gameplay for it. Yeah, you can probably guess what my biggest problem with this press conference was overall. Almost all of the announcements contained zero gameplay. So what's the point of announcing it if you have nothing to show for it? E3 is about showing off the games, not the concept, not the rendered cinematics for the game. And as far as this press conference went, there was very little gameplay shown in the trailers. Then they showed off a new indie title from Playdead, the guys who made Limbo, called Inside. It looked highly stylized, like Limbo, and it looked interesting, but not in the interesting that gets me to go out and buy the game. Interesting as in I want to see more before I decide what it is exactly about. Limbo was a very good game, so I'm hoping this one will be just as good. Then they announced the new Tomb Raider. Rise of Tomb Raider, which is that name I got a good chuckle out of. It, it's just ridiculous. It sounds like something they would do for a movie adaptation of Tomb Raider, which they've already done too, but I digress. Now, now, in spite of my thoughts on how they characterized Lara Croft in the original Tomb Raider reboot, I did like it as a game, and I'm looking forward to seeing some actual gameplay about it in the future. Hopefully, they'll actually have a survival system instead of that useless experience system that they had in the original. And then there was Witcher 3, which showed off some hunting, and and they also fought a griffin, which at first I thought was just not a griffin. I wasn't really looking forward to Witcher 3 that much myself, but it's definitely on my radar. A lot of the recent stuff that they've shown off, it looks like it's going to be a really good conclusion to the Witcher series. Also announced was a reboot of Phantom Dust, which had no gameplay and a really, really weird trailer. I admit, I'm not very familiar with Phantom Dust to begin with. It is a cult hit, but... Yeah, the trailer was weird, but hopefully it'll be really good. Microsoft said that they were all about the games at this year's E3. So here's some trailers of some games you won't get to play for a year or so with zero gameplay to show you what the actual game is. What they did show was another Ubisoft game, The Division, Tom Clancy's The Division, which when I first saw it, I have to be honest, I was one of the few people who wasn't impressed by it. I'm certainly more interested in what they're showing now, not because of the graphics or anything, even though they're probably going to get downgraded, ha ha ha, but because I don't really have an idea of what exactly it's about, other than shoot people. I need a little more context as to see what this game is going to be about and whether or not I'm actually interested in it. Then there was Platinum's new game, announced by Hideki Kamiya, Scalebound. Again, no gameplay, but to be fair, it is Platinum gamed. You're not going to be seeing some radical departure from what they've done, like say, them making a first person shooter or an RPG. You know what to expect from them. Good hack and slash action with zero story or a really silly story. Then there was the new Crackdown, which... Then there was a new Crackdown game shown off, which is not Crackdown 3 as many people kept on claiming it was. It's apparently a reboot of Crackdown. Again, no gameplay because it's all about the games, which is why we're not showing any gameplay off. 
To sum it up, it was much better than last year. It actually had focus on games, and it had some great announcements. The problem is that while there were a ton of great announcements, there were too many pre-rendered cinematics and very little gameplay. So again, better than last year, but a weak opening that seems more like it's an announcement for E3 2015. So let's see if EA can do better. Now before I sign off, let me give you a few of my predictions for EA's press conference at 2014. Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic 3. That's it. That's really all I can think of off the top of my head that they're going to show off and announce. A new Star Wars game, most likely Knights of the Old Republic 3. Am amusingly enough, there actually was going to be a Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic 3, but LucasArts canned it. So that's all for now. Until next time, game on my friends.